you got to do one of these. And then you got the little cue cards up. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Bike Man For You show. Coming to you live from West Hampton Beach, Long Island, New York. We are pushing it. It is spring. It's beautiful out. Uh, it's like, maybe, uh-oh, we got music going. Uh, there we go. Probably 50 outside, I'm guessing? Maybe not. What do you think, son of a? 45, son of a says. All right, so we'll go with that, 45. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Who's in the house? Zip, 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 zip. Hey, you know, on the way in today, we were talking about... Robin Big. I don't know if you guys ever saw that show. It was about a big black guy and a little white guy. The white guy was the skater and the big black guy was the bodyguard for the skater and they would go and anyway they became best friends and they lived together. It was a show on MTV. I call it soft scripted reality. Uh, it was a long time ago and it was this thing. And anyway there was this story. What's that? That's right. Rest in peace Big Black. He's dead. Good guy. Uh, Kind of reminds me of one of a best friend of mine. The uh, they had this episode where, and I'm not quite sure what the piece was, but it was a small statue or something. And he's big black got up and he smashed it. What was that? What was it that they were smashing? It was the time machine. Yeah, time machine. They wanted the time travel. They wanted the and the thing didn't work. So big black was all upset, and he stared it on the ground and. He, and he did this, did this the, the Mexican hat dance thing on the top of this thing, and it was f hilarious. Anyway, it kind of reminded me about the Super Bowl uh, <laughs> and uh, the goat tradition. And uh, the go I guess maybe it should be called the Scoat, maybe, as in the second greatest team. Uh, I don't know. Uh, so I got my little dig in on that. Zip, I love you, brother. I'm sorry your team lost. It happens. Uh, my house, as you could imagine, was extremely dejected. But you know what? We crossed it off, and that was that. And better luck next year. And obviously, the Philadelphia Eagles were hungry. Now, I also am a Patriots fan, but also I am an underdog fan. And which am I more of, an underdog fan or a Patriots fan? Or I'm just an underdog fan. I'm always rooting for the guy, underdog, the guy. And I, I'm not saying I was, you know, but it was a good game, man. It was an excellent game. I thought that the Philadelphia Eagles said, I'm going, man. And, I'm, and they went for everything. And you know what? Hats off to the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm not quite sure about the Philadelphia fans. I love you guys, but why do you go and start wrecking your city if your team won? I don't know about that one. So, I don't know, you know? I don't get it. Would didn't Boston fans, would Boston been in, a, I don't know, I don't know. Is this, I don't know. Whatever. I got an action-packed show today. We got this old Cannondale in the house. Check it out. If you're not familiar with who we are, we are the Bike Man for you. We come streaming to you live each and every Saturday at 10 a.m. Uh, how long we stream live for? Depends. It's the middle of winter in, 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 uh, in the Hamptons, and uh, the Hamptons is a summertime resort area, and it's pretty dead out there, but it's a nice day, and I'm kind of set up, ready to rock and roll a little bit. Uh, but we got this old Cannondale. I think even, you know what I think we're going to do? I think we're going to go outside, and we're going to see if we can put some air in the tires and see what's going on. I got a couple of ideas. I got a little story behind it, but before I do that, I better open up. Oh, I got a box. I got a box from like 1980-something, uh, believe it or not. And I want to show you what's inside of that, because that might have something to do with it. We might have a couple of tires here, but in the meantime, <laughs> I better open up. You never know. We might get a $20 bill today. At least make lunch money. You know what I'm saying? Bring it on home. Oh, hello. Oh, it was sunny out. It's getting cloudy now, but it's still warm. Warm is the key. Sorry I'm closed. Not really. Why do I have to be sorry about that? Taking a break. All right, we'll make it really official. We'll put out a flag. There's a family joke going around about a windsock. 
maybe I'll <coughs> I'll share that story with you. I'm not ready yet though for that story. It's not quite time yet. Oh yeah, it's def if that sun would come out, it's kind of like foggy, like from the uh, the sun starting to heat up the ground. The ground is a little bit more colder than the air. Ta-da! Okay, now we have the trumpets that come playing. <laughs> We put the come around the back sign on. Whoops, wrong way. All right, that takes care. We're all we are officially open, folks. Lock that. That way, they got to come around the back. We can do that. Got coffee over here. So anyway, as you guys know, I'm kind of becoming into the aquaculture oyster thing and blah, 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 blah. And this bicycle here came to us through uh, one of my friends over at the Cornell Cooperative, uh, which is where I volunteer my time. Periodically, uh, this week was a lot. I, uh, I was actually up there four days this week. Uh, one of the days was a meeting in regards to our oyster farm, our lease, our permit, our, our farm. It really is a farm getting into it deeper and deeper and deeper and the paperwork that goes into this program is fairly large and whatever anyway i got a quick quick story for you those of you that know my father or remember my father his name was mr pump and he kind of channeled me a little bit this week kind of funny the paperwork is crazy I gotta have a little ba back up here to show you what the heck is going on. Oh, what did I do with it? I gotta have it here. It's in one of these files. I know it is. I had to do some drawing. So, I t these are some of my sketches, but I started to do some drawing. Oh, here we go. And in order to do some drawing, I needed to find my drawing stuff. And I recently moved some stuff that's kind of a mess. Now, certain stuff I really didn't necessarily, I know I'm not going to need it anytime soon, but it's piled in, and then there's another personal house, and I get all the personal crap out of here, and it's all in my own personal house that I'm living in right now currently, which has been the home base, and it's got junk that's filled up to the ceiling. I need my drawing old school. I don't do it on this. I don't have the software, blah, blah, blah. And I know it's easy, blah, blah, blah. But you know what? It's just as easy for me to get out the old school drawing board, put the piece of paper on the drawing board with a T-square and a triangle. This is where it gets technical. You put the triangle on top of the T-square to draw these lines and this line does that. You're with me. Next, I couldn't find the triangles. High and low, high and low, high and low. So, I don't know. So I'm looking and looking and looking. This is my drawing that I made. This is presentable for, this is a one inch equals one foot scale drawing of our oyster cages. One of the things about the Happy Oyster is that we want to be transparent as possible. Um, meaning, I want to share it with everybody. I don't want, and this is where some farmers might get a little pissed off. I want to share the fact that there's a lot of work that goes involved in this, but in the other side, the rewards are great because of the fact that you're helping the ecology, you're just helping, you're helping. You're not, by far, and farming oysters is helping the environment, period. Uh, it's also a food source. It also provides jobs for other people, uh, if you were a farmer. There's a lot of different things that go into it, as well as promotion for the east end of Long Island, one of the most pristine and beautiful places on the planet. So, again, and, you know, and, and me going into this farming thing, I'm not a farmer. I'm a mechanic. But you know what? A lot of farmers are mechanics. Hence, 
We've been building a tumbler. Uh, we've been outside here in the barn with a kerosene heater. I'm going to show you that in a half a minute. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I couldn't find my triangle. My father was a farmer. What I did find was this knife. You get her? A knife. It's a cheapo knife. I looked it up on eBay. It's $14.99. I think you can get it. They call it a vintage knife. It's called a Victor Boson knife. It has a worn out leather deal on here and it is a knife like that. And it's pretty sharp because I took it to the steel on the kitchen counter when I found it. And uh, I sharpened her up a little bit. And it also has an awl in order to do for knots and stuff like that. Well, Bike Man, what's the big deal? This knife was bought for my birthday. Eight? Nine? Before the shop. Just before the shop opened up. I was into sailing. I had taken sailing lessons, blah, blah, blah. And it was given to me by my father for my birthday. And I used to use it. And the reason it has a lanyard on it is, you know, and again, I was eight, nine years old, and, you know, I wasn't allowed to take it to school. But on the weekends and stuff, or whatever, doing large, yard, again, I was a working kid, always doing something. I would put this around my deal like this, and this goes onto there like that. This is so I didn't lose it. This is my father's idea, this, this whole shooting match. It was an inexpensive knife. It's, you know, 15 bucks. It's not the greatest of steel. It's Japan. It says Japan in here. It's sharp as a mother, though, right now. And uh, it's got this little locking mechanism, but the, the lanyard, so I didn't lose it. So I could use it on whatever I was tying or whatever. Would it, you know? Again, we had a, had the sailboat or whatever it might have been. Who knows what I was doing? I was, you know, I thought I was a big dude, man. I was eight, nine years old. I had myself a little pocket. Man. So that was my father talking to me this week. I thought I'd share that one with you. Pretty good story, right? Um, so we come down to the one thing I'm not going to share with our new business is numbers and how many are out there or how many that this guy is growing or how many is that guy going. I'm going to be very, very general when it comes to numbers. But on the other side of the coin, you got to, if you're going to become a farmer, which I hope some guys would watch our channel and, and want to become a farmer or support a farmer, You've got to have transparency. When I say support a farmer, there's a lot of organizations out there that are just dying to uh, help the environment. And this is a great way to help the environment. And provide jobs. And, you know, make a living. So the numbers came down to how do you count little baby oysters? Well, how do you count little baby oysters? That's for the question of the day. We'll get back to that in a little bit, maybe. This bike comes from a friend of mine out in Cornell. Again, we're still on Bike Channel, right? Let's go outside. One of my friends at Cornell said, hey, bike man, I know you're getting to be a farmer, and this might be your last bicycle that you restore. Highly doubt that. Like I said, the last time, and I, this will be an ongoing debate for a long, 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 long time. I guarantee you that. Does a Major League Baseball player remember his last home run? Not necessarily. How's that camera lens looking there, Antonio? You need a little clean them up? I don't have any walkie-talkie here. Give you a little spit polish and shine. It's looking a little dirty on this side. How's that? A little better? All right, so we got an older Cannondale. Uh, it's a Cannondale Delta V400. Right off the bat, I'm looking at this thing. Something's not right here. It's, this works pretty good, and there's no play in it, but why is there this space between here and here? 
what's going on here? This looks a little dangerous, this little spot here. And if I look down the pipe here, you can see that uh, they pulled the star nut all the way through. This is all for cock the kid, so that, that spacer is... And this is up a little bit. Looks like they tried to raise the handlebar and they didn't figure it, they didn't know how to. But they figured, oh, a little bit is better than nothing. This could have been really, really dangerous. Glad we found it. Um, we got grips that are shot. We have grip shift, old school seven speed grip shift. The rubber is literally worn away. This is, you used to be able to get the new rubbers for this. It's shot, uh, three speed. So grips, that garbage. I'm just making my assessment here, all right? You're with me over my assessment. It has purple skewers. I don't know if these came with it or these were aftermarket. I think these are aftermarket, actually. Interesting there. This is a seven speed cassette. Old school. 80s? 90s? Maybe 90s, probably. Uh, spokes are pretty taut. Not too bad. The guy that owns this. If it was his when he bought it new, he's a pretty, he's a light guy, so he's not uh, he's not a Clydesdale like us uh, or like me. And uh, he uh, he wouldn't have been beaten on it that bad. He's around my age. Wheels are fairly true. Got a fairly new tire on the front. It's a connected center block. Kenda, we sell this tire pair of them on the website for like around fifty bucks to your door. Let's see if it, if it airs up. Let's just see if that holds air. I think we're going to put new tires on it. He talked about making it into a Sunday go to meet and bike, a uh, kind of like a grocery store bike or to the market type of thing. But I says, you know, you're hitting me at a great time of the year. I'm kind of hurting for some content. There's 65 in it. Notice how I'm, it, it's been in storage for a long time, and I'm, I'm putting... A little bit in it, and then I'm giving it a spin. I'm making sure that the tire is not going to go kaboom in your face, man. See it too many times. Ouch. I think we got a real honest to goodness flat tire in the back. This might have been. I'm not sure. It was ridden when it was uh, when it, when there wasn't a lot of air. That's for sure. I could tell by all these little hash marks along the side. Not quite seating that great, but it is seating somewhat. I th my hearing's going bad, so I don't. This might have been the original tire for this bike. Boom! Right about now. I'm gonna leave it alone with that. Just for kicks, I'll see if it's going to hold. Looks like it's got some definite footage going on here. Maybe there was a teenager on this thing. Maybe one of his kids. His kids would be about old enough to be teenagers at this time frame. When the bike was, you know, still up and running. What are we going to do to it? we got to fix this. Sunday go to meeting. We, he said something. About, oh, gears. He said gears. I want the gears to work. It's a good quality Shimano STX rear derailleur index. Obviously, there's not. There's a. Well, I shouldn't say that. There's definitely a little play in there. There's definitely considerable play in there. Might want to replace that. It's got a new connected link on there. It looks like at one time it might have been brought into a shop to be done because I, this does not look the same as what was on this thing when it was new. So it probably was the gears weren't working that great. They took it to the shop. He put a new chain and a new cog on it, the looks of things. I'm just, you know, sometimes you've got to be Sherlock Holmes with this, with this stuff. Uh, we're going to put the chain on a tester in a second and see what the story is with that. Let's take a look at these chain rings right here, these teeth, and see what's going on with this. Some people come into me and say, oh, man, look, the one of them is broken. No, it's supposed to be broken. It's supposed to be cut off. Um, seems to pedal pretty good. No real play in the bottom bracket. This is a sealed system in this. This was, this was probably a five, $600 bike when it was new. 
the shock system on this thing is broken. Oh, oh my. Oh. <laughs> um, again, this thing is at the Marine Center, and you know what happens with Marine stuff. Oh, boy. We got junk inside of there. We got, like, salt crystals. We got, like, ooh, when you roll it, it feels like the bearings inside of here are dry as a bone. It just kind of, you almost hear it. Doesn't look bad, though. I mean, again, Sunday going to meet and bike. Do we really need to make this thing deluxe? That brake works, but check this out. You see this here, how close that is? No matter how close, no. If I keep squeezing on that, that's improperly. We should loosen that up and put these in or do something to make that travel a little bit more so it... This knob is not going to hit the top of that. Because once it hits that, it ain't going any, like that's not going any farther. Now, granted, that brake is solid as a rock right now, but I'm just showing you what I see. Something's going on here with this front fork, and this is not safe. We've got to do something about that. And what do we got with that, this old, this thing? When I'm looking down inside of here, i got like a little, I'm trying to figure out how the heck am I going to show you. Maybe. You know what? We'll go get the walkie-talkie because I got something else I want to show you. I'll go inside. We'll go get the walkie-talkie from Son of a. Um, for you guys that are just tuning in and have never been to us before, or maybe you're new. Maybe you're newcomers from Seth Spike Hack. Seth Spike Hacks. His channel has been on YouTube for about half the amount of time that ours has been on. Uh, but he has really killed it. He's up there cutting out 500,000 subscribers, God bless him. He has really done a phenomenal job with marketing his brand, his channel, and his dig. He came out and visited us last this past summer, uh, right around when I told, you know, in fact, I had told him that I was selling, and <clears throat> he did a really nice job editing up a video of lost footage, and let's go inside and check it out. Now, I'm not sure if it's going to work this way that we did this. We kind of pre-planned this a little bit. So, let's go in and say hello to Son of a for a sec. Do I still have a coffee? Yeah, I do. So, here is the man behind the curtain. We got Son of a in the house. Son of a, you say hello to everybody up there. And hello, everybody. The, uh, Seth came and he did a thing, and I think Antonio's going to be able to plug it through our computer and whatnot uh, and be able to watch it, like, regular, like, on, like, if, like, okay, Hal, let's go to the video tape, and boom, it goes over there, like, really getting sophisticated, not that our... But, you know, we've been live and streaming. Since 20, it's a six season, so six year, 2012. Somewhere in that neighborhood, yeah. yeah, yeah. We were, he was a pioneer in this whole live streaming thing, and we figured this all out, and we put it all together, and blah, 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 blah. So the live streaming thing is something that, and I talk about it, and, well, I'm not going to say, let's go, let's check it out. Hey, hopefully this is going to work. If it doesn't work this way, we do have a backup. It'll be another week before I'm back in the Hack Shack, so I decided to enlist some help to get a video out. Meet Bobo if you don't already know him. Hello! I'm letting him into my house remotely so he can get to my computer. I'm in. There, he'll have access to terabytes of unused footage that I never made videos with. You'll find out why. I got the files. I am taking off. <laughs> ah! The first two archives I transferred to Bobo were straight up failed videos. In late summer, I went out with just my phone in a hero session to show what you can do with minimal camera gear. Things started off great. I was getting shots and telling a story. Until the skies opened up. I decided to hightail it back down before it got worse. It never ended up getting quite what I needed. And that was that. The second archive was of me clearing debris off a trail, which I do from time to time. It was after that big hurricane hit Florida and made its way. There you go. Okay. 
Oh, so you could queue it up to that on yeah, that. To, yeah, I can queue it up here. All right, and then stream it over to the, hit that button, and then for that shot, and then go from there. No. Okay. Right, 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 right. So now you're gonna go. Now you're just gonna hit the hit the button to that one. Hit this. We have the East Coast is a tropical depression. The damage on the trail wasn't that bad, and I cleared it all without. Huh? Uh, we tried. We, we, uh, uh, next time around, next time we have the opportunity, it was capable. You were kind of checking it out. You were saying, it. good job, though, man. You're right. your progress. We're going to go to plan B. Go, come on over to the old school way, the way that we used to do it. Oh, it's funny. This is my backpack that's getting heavier and heavier with paperwork by the day. Ooh, ah. dun, 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 dun. All right, over to here. Is this it? Yeah, maybe not. This it? No, this is it. Bear with me. I was reading over his comments this morning on this. Yeah, there we go. Uh, all right, we got to take this off. We're gonna need voice on this. We need this all the way up. How you doing? You're good over there, Antonio. You're on my thing. I don't have a lot of angleage. Is that cool? I'm gonna have to hold it though. Maybe not. Alright, that ain't bad. Let me back it up just a hair. Yeah. You go on a mountain bike trail to climb and beat yourself up and have like a religious experience, but a bike park you go to to be pampered. Yeah, yeah. It does. You know? <laughs> the next archive is from my last trip to New York when I visited the Bike Man. The Bike Man for You is a shop owner out in the Hamptons who frequently runs a live stream on his YouTube channel. It's really cool that you're here, man. Can you tell he's from Long Island? You know, what's compatible with what and where and how and who and he? Like, <laughs> Bike Man's live streaming setup is absolutely insane, comprising of pan tilt zoom security cameras mounted all over the property. He walks around repairing bikes with a wireless lapel mic as a camera operator controls the show. So first of all, talk to me about live streaming. We've been five years now, uh, and every single weekend, Saturdays, we go live. And there's just nothing better. The feeling of going live, and you know, in my own personal, I get addicted to going live. And I just love it. There's something about live that you know whatever's going on, yeah, just transparency. Bike Man has quite the story. If I wanted to work, I was able to work. So I had five grand at 10 years old, put it on the table, I said, I want to be a third partner. Both my parents came up with five grand each, so we started a business with $15,000 to get our inventory started. And that's how it all began. Bike Man is an entrepreneur, pool toy enthusiast, and live streaming pioneer. So what's up with the pool toys? Pool toys are pool toys, man. Everybody needs an inflatable in their life. The only reason I never made a video out of this was that my trip out west got in the way. And the final archives consists of footage right. from that trip. So, right there you have it. So, again, I super appreciate it. Seth, um, thank you so much. Coming back over here. Um, back to that. You didn't do too bad, I thought. All right, bang, bang. Let me see here. Refresh this to get this up to set. So we check. We'll take some questions if we got any questions. The uh, it was fun to see Seth, and when he came over and whatnot. We did stream it live when Seth came here. Uh, you can go back and see it uh, accordingly. What the heck is going on over here? Do. Do, do. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. That's cool. How, what's up with my chat? How come my chat isn't chatting? Oh. Show chat. There we go. All right. We're up now. We're all good. good. Oh, what happened? What do we got? We got ads over here. What's going on with that? Click on an ad. How to build a vintage bike. What did I do? What the heck? I need a little help over here. Here we go. I need a full-on producer to help me out. And I need another cup of coffee. 
Jimmy Payton, what's going on? How's life in the fast lane? Johnny, uh, light roadie. Park Tool Truing Stand, Center, uh, Park Tool website. Oh, you guys are getting all kinds of technical over there, huh? Boy, oh boy. We are, uh, are, we are a chatty bee, man. I guess so. So what's a good word, Dan Panetta? Danny Pantera. He liked it when I called him Pantera. We like the music Pantera. Reverend Rufus. Hey, you know? Forced to watch your own commercials. Too funny. Yeah. What can I tell you? Ricky, what's going on? Uh, so we got any questions in the house? Um, all right. So we're back to that Cannondale and that old school. And it's kind of old school, young school, new school. And uh, from the dead school, I guess. That coffee is officially done. Love from Ohio. Loveland, Ohio. Hello, Bubba556. Five, five, Southern Outlaw, what's going on? Wisconsin's in the house. All right, now you guys are getting into it. Great summary uh, from... Yeah, it was. He did a nice job. What's going on, soundtrack? Eleanor Davenport, miss your shows, Bart. Why'd you miss them? Why? You're here now. So, bing, there you go. Sup? What's happening? Jim Papp. Let's call Howie. Oh, do a quickie. Tr I, 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 I didn't get over to see Howie. I got to go. Where's Freddie? Uh, Freddie went upstate, I heard. He went upstate and was doing some ice boating. Ice. Yeah, ice boating. Um, so, I don't know. I'll be back. back. I'm just going over here for half a second. I want to show you what I found. I remember I had this. I don't know if it's going to work on this thing, but I do remember I had it. <clears throat> and I haven't looked at it, and I didn't even pull it out beforehand, but I just looked down the pipe here, and I knew it was an old rock shock that I had that was tucked away in somewhere. <clears throat> and I figured maybe it might work on that, because it is, if you looked at it, it's only an inch diameter. It's a small headset. Uh, one of the dating, one of the ways you could date that thing is by like that. So, oh, this is a threaded, so I don't think you could use it. It's a little rusty. This is an old air oil rock shock when they first came out. This is probably a collector's item. This shit belongs in the, now that I'm looking at it, belongs in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Um, you unscrew these little Phillips heads on the top of there, and it has this injector that you put air in it. This is a true air oil. This is like one of the original rock shocks. It is, this one's threaded. This is how, you know, when's the last time? Now, could I reuse this and use it as a, un, I don't know. It, it's, I think it's just going to be too much work. I think this is better off keeping this pristine. Let me see. Oh, here's the little thing it comes with. <laughs> here's the little Oh, 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 you guys are, if you guys are into vintage crap, this is, you guys are all drooling right now. I work every other Saturday, but I take off by using a vacation day. Johnny, why not? That a boy. If a cross to gray, put tape across the frame at a time. That's with a marker to get close, I guess. Wolfie's in the house. I saw a Rock Shock sticker on a car once. Okay, so this thing here was the injector that you would use. This is an old school, uh, one up to, you know, 40-ish, between 35 and 45 PSI. It has a little green arrow part on that. Uh, I have the instructions here and whatnot. Uh, I wonder if there's anything left in this. Oh, look at that. It still does its thing. Oh, yeah, very functional. Uh, right now, it's just basically recoil and, you know, with whatever's left in there. We're, Maybe we'll give it a little shot and see what happens. Or leave it alone. Throw it back in the box. That sounds like a good idea. Uh, so what's this thing worth? Anybody want to check that out for me? If you guys ain't doing nothing, you know, if you're not doing anything, you know. Morning from Rocky Point, New York Patriot. What's going on? Oh, it's my buddy. It's my buddy who I was talking about that reminds me of Big Black. He's a white guy, though. His name is Guy, as a matter of fact. You might have seen him on years ago. Uh, uh, Sasquatch. Sasquatch, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Guy. Thank you, uh, Antonio. <laughs> Sasquatch in some of our ice fishing videos uh, from yesteryear. 
pretty funny stuff, actually. Can you buy speedster parts? What do you mean speedster parts? Light road, can you please show your blue dishing tool? It was a VAR. I'm dying to see it, please. Yeah, sure. Uh, bike man, great way to start a Saturday morning at the bike shop. Bring it on home. Thank you. Donnie Peyote, message retracted. Good shot. Just don't fit them on the car. Oh, so, um, yeah, so I think this thing's going to go right back in this little box because I think it's probably worth more going to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Plus, maybe I could put a sticker on it, donated by. That way, man, you know, I can get in the mountain, mountain Bike Hall of Fame one way or another. <laughs> by hooker, by, by back, I think they call it a back door. Back door. Hey, hola, amigo. I'm all right. How about you? Lunch money, maybe. I'm going to try. Uh, uh, I have a problem with my bicycle. Okay? Uh, I have a flat tire. Flat tire? Yanta or Tuvo? Yeah, sure. Here, I'm by the bike. Where's the bike? I got it with my friend Park. All right, bring it around. Bring it around. Yeah. We're going to make lunch money. We're going to make lunch money, boys. I told you it was a nice day today. Necesito Busta Kate. Oh, I forgot the walkie-talkie. What's he got? Oh, he's got a nice Toyota out front. Does it work? Yep. Necesito. Oh, muy bueno bicicleta. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I see. Yanta doesn't look too bad. All right, let's see what we got. Good bicicleta, no? Good bike? Good. We'll do it right away, all right? Yeah. That's... The rack is a little frozen there. Do you tell him he's on YouTube, or do you don't tell him he's on YouTube? Oh. It's nice day today. Perfecto! Yeah, you're telling me. Yeah. How you doing? All right, let's see what we got. Yeah. You guys are together? Yeah. Got you. Got you. These guys are talking about me now. Uh, I lost all my good stuff over here. Oh, here we go. No. Everything fell over here the other day from the top. There we go. Let's see what we got here. here. All right, you ready? Here we go. A little piece of glass here. Now I don't know if that did it, but you know that's that that that's got to come out. Of there. Let's see what else. Let's see what else. Was it slow? Slow? Real slow? Did it take a long time? Yeah. To go flat? Oh, not the tire ain't doing too bad actually.
Sí, eso es bueno. Oh, sí, creo que sí. Porque se había pasado encima de... Michelob, Michelob Budweiser. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's what did it. Over a period of time, it keeps pushing, pushing, pushing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of guys drinking and then uh, yeah. go away. And... Yeah. Well, careful, it doesn't hit you in the cabeza oh. when you're going down the road. Bang! Ah! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no good. No oh, good. Cerveza in the cabeza, no good. <laughs> I think that I have cerveza once in a while. No whiskey, no whiskey. Make me whiskey, make me loco. Yeah. What about you? You like the whiskey? Jack Daniels? No? American booze. American booze. <laughs> what do I got to say about that? Uh, that was funny. All right, I'm back. I'm back at you. Hmm. Oh, I don't know if I want that one. That's got the long Schrader valve. I don't want that one. Thank goodness. Not very many people have that tube. I think I got it by mistake, actually. It's a for one of the Walmart special bikes where it needs a deep dish vermin. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, you wanted to see my dishing tool. Where do I have it? Inside? Inside, huh? Fishing tool will be inside. Alright. I promise. Don't let me forget. I'll go easy on this guy. He's riding a bike man bike. You get a bike man bike. Yeah. You ride just one gear. You never change. You don't change here. You don't push nothing. No. You like it in that one and in that one, eh? At the looks of things. Because this one's starting to get a little worn. I can tell. Mm -hmm. You know? You might want to go up one over here. I'll put it up one. Yeah, it might be a little easier to pedal. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. Just a bit. You know, what do you say? Uh, how do you say? Uh, pequeño? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Just a little bit. A little okay. bit easier. easier. But you got to, you know, it might, you know. Kind of I can tell you're wearing only that one. All these other ones are like brand new. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. This one here is the one you wear out. You're wearing it out. So we pop it up. It's got gears. Use the damn things. It gets tough to pedal. Pushing here gets a little easier. Go up the hill. Yeah, comprend it. Try. I'll make sure it's working while it's here. You're taking good care of it, though. You take. You know. You keep good. You keep good. You like it. You know my friend Sebastian. You know. You guys should know Sebastian. He rides a good bike. He knows. How much air do I got in here? Plenty. Uh -huh. 
This cat's gonna fly now. Let's see what we got here. Yeah. Yucko. Didn't expect to get dirty today. It's all right. Make a little lunch money. Right, let's see what happens here. Yeah? You okay? Yeah, it works good. So when easier here, harder this one. Click it to you. Leave this one alone. That one's all right. Leave that out of that one that you like so much. That's that one there, that one. You look down there. Now you're in, instead of six, you're in five. Right, seven, mm -hmm. six, five. Yeah. Nice. Perfecto. Let's get a little loop in that chain while you're here. Let's put a little of this sauce on there. Mucho. Okay, make it hard. You know, super hard. Makes you go better, makes you go faster. You guys stop with that talk. Come on. I can hurt myself here. Nothing going on. S spring, I need the spring time. Where's the springtime? This sucks. Nice today. Oh, here we go. Let's try this stuff. I'd like to buy some light. There. You need a light? Huh? Yeah, I got some lights How kicking much? around. I don't know. For you? Yeah, I need a new one. All right. We go inside. Okay. These guys speak pretty good English. All right, we'll use a little of that wet stuff on there. Let's keep that along. All right. You're welcome. <clears throat> All right, let's side, and we'll see. We can leave it right there. Perfecto. Let's go in, see what we got in lights. Come on with me. Here we go. You want battery or you want recharge? You want front and rear? What? What's that? I give you a good deal on this, man. It's f it's twenty five dollars, but it's bright. It's not twenty five dollars though. Ten dollars to you right now. You owe me ten bucks. Yeah, ten bucks for that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The another one. What's that? This also goes just solid. What's that? Which one? The, the red. Sell me one. That, which one here? Red? No, no. Yeah, yeah. The, the another one over here. Yeah. Here? Yeah. You want to do one of those instead? A little more money here. This one here, what the heck is this? Batteries are included. Yeah. This is a $30 light on sale to you, 12 bucks. So you owe me 22 if you take this light and the flat tire. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. That's pretty bright. It comes a little much, bracket. $12. 12? 12. 12. Okay. Right. And you owe me 10 there. So you owe me 20. You owe me 22. Okay. 20 dos. Okay. Hey, that was pretty good, right? Is that how you say it? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got nothing smaller than this? How much are 22. 22. There we go. There we go. Yeah, perfecto. Nah, gracias. Two. One. Uno. Dos. Perfecto. Here. Thank you for helping me. Oh, thank you very much, amigo. What's your name? Numero. Arturo. Arturo. Arturo, thank you. When I need help, I come with you. You, You're on. You got my card? Here, take oh, my yeah. take my card. That's okay. got my number on there. Yeah, All right, my cell phone. I'll call you for something. I'll fix you. Thank You're welcome. In Have case I'm not day. here. You too. Adios, amigos. Adios.
All right. Bing, baby. Not just lunch money for me, but son of a... I got lunch money for you, too. <laughs> How sweet is that? Lunch is on me today. Uh, I got to do a little cleanup. Where were we? Before we got rudely interrupted. Oh, we were on shock and we were on that. That was not, that was not rudely. That was good. Let me give this a little clean. We got to get out of here fairly soon because we got visitors coming and we don't want to be here for the visitors. Tony Joe is coming soon. I think we're still pretty good though, aren't we? We'll stick around to see her and then we'll sign off right after that. What's that? 10.52. It's 10.52 right now? All right, we're doing good. We made a little assessment on that bike out there. Let's cut those cables. Uh, mute me down for a second, I'm gonna hit the head. The, uh, yeah, I was trying to stuff that white light down his throat, but he wasn't going for it. I didn't give him choices. Here, you want this one. <laughs> All right, what else you got? Anybody good out there? Light Road, he wanted to see that, that dishing tool. Thank you for reminding me. Here it is, it's right here. Silly me. Made in France. Not just any old dishing tool. Let me polish my dishing tool. Excuse me, sir. May I polish your dishing tool? Oh, yeah. Huh? How's she looking? You like it? Oh, you want to see it outside? You want to see it on the stage? One of the last tools, one of the last stages. I drilled a hole in here so I could hang it on the wall. Here you go, on the, on the stage. All bow down to the VAR dishing tool. Everybody got to do that at the same time. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Where are we over here? Oh, yeah. We're going to hack the crap out of this bike in about two and a half seconds right now. I need garbage. Oh, I wish I was in the land of cotton. Grips. Bye-bye. This thing had bar ends at one time. Now, there is absolutely no sense in even trying to figure out how to get them off, to reuse them or whatever. They are dead. They're dry rot. They are garbage. I know somebody's going to make a comment after I get done with this next one. Because they're going to say, oh, you should save the cables. Oh, no. We are paid professionals here. We are not saving the, the cables. Oh, excuse me. Oh, my goodness. What the heck did I eat last night? Oh, that pizza from the new joint. The new old joint. It wasn't that good. Did you like that pizza from the new old joint? Oh, as little as possible. Can you I can hear you. We got yeah, I, I like the better. Oh, we got Neil is in the house. Eel the Neil's leaving. We're live. Come on down. Come on down and say hello. Oh, all right. Yeah, but you 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 don't want to. <laughs> uh, the eel. The eel. All right, so we're getting rid of that cable. Why are you getting rid of the cable bike? Well, the thing has been sitting for God knows how long, and 
it's a buddy and I want to make sure that this thing and it's one of my last bikes that I'll ever do you know the last one you're right how do I I want to make sure it's a number one and it's going to be you know it's going to have new brake cable a uh, gear cable so you know let's put on some new brake cables while we're at it it's not that big of a deal we are going to need to get some uh, I'm just hacking these things off um, we are going to need to get some new casing and some furls. I got to put that on the order. I was saving my order sheet for this week. Um, now this time of the year, you don't have a lot going on when it comes to orders. Uh, we need a valve key for that. Ordering and then the stuff on the net and how much more are we going to be doing on the net and. Uh, and I'm going to be honest with you guys, you know, it's very exciting times, and I'm kind of glad I'm getting out of that whole retail environment, but the retail thing is hurting. Um, I just saw yesterday L.L. Bean, a longtime retailer, has stopped doing their lifetime guarantee on their old school, you know, their duck boot, their boot that actually made them famous. It's a hunting boot. It's like half leather and half gum. Everybody's tried to copy it. This thing doesn't come off of there, and I don't know why. Come on, baby. It's coming. It's the gook that was on for them. Oh, grip. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to have to get mean in a minute. Let me see if this one comes off even easier. A little easier. Oh. Ideos. That's loose. Let me see if I can punch myself in the gonads. Just kidding. All right, so we stripped that off. We stripped that off. Strip this out. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Original brake pads on the back. That's oh, some serious rust and corrosion on that brake cable. I don't know if we're going to reuse these or what we're going to do there, but we'll keep them for now. I think I'm going to put new brake pads on. This seems to be going slow down. We gotta get rid of this other stuff. We need, let's see, a nine and a regular Allen key. You know, got a lot of young kids that are watching us all the time. What's the best tool, bike man? Blah 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 blah. You know, tool. Personally, myself, as I've got older, I haven't bought a set of wrenches like this in a long time we were traditional sears again here we go retail again right uh sears craftsman for their lifetime warranty didn't really use their lifetime warranty very much but always had their stuff because their stuff was quality craftsman quality uh open-ended box wrench nine millimeter every toolbox should have a set of open-ended box wrenches metric and american If you're just doing bicycles, metric is fine. You know, if you can't afford to, you know, and if you want to just get down and basic, dirty, start buying singular wrenches, you can. Buying singular wrenches is expensive. If you buy the set, you're probably going to get it a lot cheaper. Like, the price of two singular wrenches is the price of the set. So get the whole set, usually. All right, our cables are now kaputsticated. I got one left back here, it looks like, the front derailleur. Mm. We talked about maybe checking that chain, seeing where we're at with that. I got a feeling these bags are really dry inside. I don't think I want to do anything with them, to tell you the truth, right now, today, here, now. We'll see what it is when we get it off. Again, we're just on an assessment right now. 
I'm going to leave this piece of casing because there's a little ferrule that's connected to this that we've got to make sure that we don't lose. Leave that alone for now. Uh, we could throw this thing through a quickie wash now. We're pretty much there. Uh, the question is, is the chain in the car, is it any good? That's something that we were talking about. And that is one of the dumb complaints from the customer, my friend. Uh, gear. Now, it was pretty obvious that those shifters were shot. They were done. Um, but is there something else? And why was, why, why was this a new... This is a new aftermarket. I can tell you that right away. I know it's an aftermarket. They changed that, but they didn't change that. Hmm. But the, and they changed this chain, too, because it's got one of them connected quickie, quickie links in there. Let me put that up over here, so that way I'm not measuring where that is. Lat now, let's say you didn't have this tool, okay? play on the chain that's kind of like what's going on that's kind of how we would me maybe measure it whoops get that into there a new chain is from 0.25 to 0.5 this thing is measuring I can see the 0.5 in there so we're going on to the next level of bustification which means replacement. Now, the bike here, from it's one of the last ones. <laughs> Sorry. Let me take it out of my... I'm good on the battery. We replaced the battery last time. Oh, I got a phone. I got a message. Um, guy. Oh, it's Derby weekend this weekend? Oh, man. This weekend's Derby weekend. If you don't know what Derby Weekend is, Derby Weekend is the weekend of the great Meredith Ice Fishing Dirt. All right, we have seven speed and three Zs. Do I have it? Eight speed, sucker. Eight speed, sucker. Eight speed again, sucker bait. I have a funny story about sucker baits. Someday. I will tell it to you. No, 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 no. All right, we gotta go to the order book on that. Um, the seven speed cassette, I wanna see if I got one. Again, it's, you know what? Get it out of here. If I got it in stock, get rid of it. Let me check down here. I thought I saw a seven speed cassette. Oh, hallelujah. Oh my goodness, I am good. We're changing the cassette and the chain. Get rid of it. I got a seven speed cassette. Probably one of the, like the original that came on there. Good deal. All right, I got that. I'm putting the parts together this. Break the pads. We're gonna put a new set of tires. We're gonna put the Kenda Crosses on there, even though these are functional. Um, we still have to figure out what's going on with that fork. Let's see if we can figure that out right now. Let's give that some. You know what that? You know what that thing needs right off the bat. You guessed it, sauce, and it's not WD. What is the sauce? Again, do we have brand new listeners today? Brand new viewers? Is anybody a brand new viewer today? Never been on the show before? Coming in through bus sets, bike apps? This should come right off, I would assume. But then again, you know what happens when we assume? Oh yeah. We're good. Now, let's take a look at what we got. <laughs> The guy whose bike, he's a pretty resourceful guy. He's pretty, he's, he's mechanical too. Um, he's mechanic, he's farm, he is farmer's physics, farmer's, farmer mechanic. He, uh, sometimes he might hack something a little bit. With love, with love, I'm saying this with love. I'm not being derogatory in any way, shape, or form. He's 
or pump pliers or craftsmen, and I sure could use a replacement of these. They've been with me for eons. I wonder what would happen if I went to a Sears store and said, hi, I want a new one. That'd be a video in itself. They, even, they said so right there, craftsman, blah, blah, blah. Water pump pliers. I just want to see if I could twist these. These, uh, oh my. Oh my, my. Oh my. Oh no. Uh, we have a situation here. Always use the right tool for the right job. Hmm. Got to think about that for a minute. Let me uh, let me pick these little thingies out of here. Again, I think the shock is going to go. Maybe we put a hard tail on it, hard fork on it. What do I do with that? Oh, here it is. Maybe we put a hard fork on, you know, a solid one on. That's what I was thinking. This thing was living. I mean, the creek is right there, from here to that white thing over there, the creek. And this thing probably lived there when Sandy went down, which I heard they had quite the flood going on at this facility. I was not, I was not a member of their facility when Sandy happened. But we had a lot, of, a lot of floodage. Now you can see how that special sauce started to eat that up pretty good. Um, take a good look, take a, take a sh get a close up in there, son of a, if you can. I'm gonna give it another little flushing of the sauce. Flushing, can I have the royal ass flush, the royal flushers, please? <laughs> the royal saucers, sauce it. What is your sauce? I had this the other day. Sauce is 50 50 acetone and automatic transmission fluid, 50% each. Um, when you mix it up, you must give it a little shot down the pipe just for the heck of it. You must use one of these WD-40 bottles uh, because they're the only ones that have the seal. All right, before I start letting this thing, s oh, you can actually like see it kind of bubbling in there. I, I used a real fine awl to scratch right around the crack where the spacer hits the fork. Fork is steel, spacer is aluminum. So right off the bat, we have a dissimilar metal situation going on there, which if you've been following me for a while, you understand what the story is with dissimilar metal. So I clean that crack real good right in here with that awl that I have. Now I'm going to take this this exact this uh, utility knife and I'm going to proceed to cut myself, and uh, and then I'm going to cuss, and then I'm going to go off the air, and then I'm going to go into the hospital. No, I'm just kidding. I'm trying to put a little bit of action between these two, and not cut yourself. It's just nothing there, baby. Nothing. More sauce, said the royal saucer. Just a little pinch. I'm, you know what I'm afraid of? I'm afraid of the guy driving the thing, all of a sudden the thing lets loose. Now granted, it won't go very far, but boy, it's definitely if he's got a load and he's uh, precariously holding on to something such as such as what, bike man? I don't know, like maybe packages from the grocery store. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I'm just going to give it a little tap. I'm not going nutsy cuckoo here. All right, I have a rawhide mallet. My friend of mine, my buddy, but Sasquatch gave me this. It's non marring. Not everybody has one of these. I'm just trying to beat the crap out of it to get the sauce in there, maybe. Vibration. It does seem to be going down the crack, which is kind of nice. All right, I'm just going to give a little bit of taparoo to see what happens in the crack. I'm starting to scuff them up a little bit. You got plenty of spacers downstairs. Yeah, I know. I got a lot of spacers. I just was wanting to see if we could take it apart without 
destroying the crap out of it. But it looks like we're going to have to destroy it. Do I want to take that chance and open up Pandora's? Oh, ho, 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 ho. maybe not. Oh, oh, honey. Honey. I'm so glad you gave it the sauce, honey. Yeah. All right. So, you know what they say? Persistence. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. We got it. Sauce. More sauce. Mmm, look. You got a close-up of that? Antonio? Yes, no? You got... Uh, look at that. It, it, the sauce kind of got in there a little bit. Oh. Mmm. Like the sound effects? This one's going to come off. All right. All right. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. I know you guys are loving this. You haven't seen this kind of stuff in a long time. You guys are like, Yeah, buddy, man! Yeah! Yeah, Vikeman, go! Go, Vikeman, go! Go, Vikeman, go! 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 go. Uh, Alright, now, come out. There's usually a little V thing, and that's what's really been holding this whole shooting match together. That's coming up next here, I think. Uh, again, we're going back to the original deal. We gotta scrape away all the crap. There's gonna be a little spot, there it is, that's got a... It's not to make, it, it's not to, you're not, you're not scraping the crap, you're scraping, scraping the crap away right at the crack where the, where the X, A, B, A, A, A hits B. Now you can see that there's definitely some rusty corrosion action going on there. And you want to scrape that crap out of there with whatever you got. Use the utility knife. I like that all was working pretty good. Your, your bosun knife. My father was classic for always carrying a knife with him. Always. He always had a knife. The other thing my father always had in his pocket was a tape measure. He always could come up with a tape measure. I mean, not many people, you know, he's, he had that little guy, the little one. He had more crap in his pockets. And he had, always had a system down for his little pocket system, too. He, had, he always had to have a shirt with a, 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 a pocket in the top. If he didn't have a shirt with a pocket in the top, no good. Because he kept his notepad, his pencil, and oh, he always had a knife. Like I said, a knife. In his later years, it was one of those little utility box knives. The ones with the re replaceable blade. He liked those because they were always sharp. Oh, there's no way, man. We got some play. We got some play happening. Oh, there we go. There we go. All right, did you notice that technique there? Anybody? We got it. It's not as bad as you thought it was. You thought it was going to be really bad. What's this looking like? I thought it was going to be a lot worse than this. But again, the shock part I don't think is working. <laughs> not bad. They're dry. Uh, they still move. Not the end of the world. Um, how can I show you guys what's going on there? Here we go. This way, like this. Let me line myself up like a like a golf caddy. Which way? Where's the wind blowing from? There we go. That should be pretty good. Uh. All right. 
you get that? <coughs> Maybe if we just squirt some sauce. Ow! Squirt some sauce down the uh, the crack. The fork seems to move now that I got it off of that thing. He just wants it as a commuter bike, a bike to the back and forth. All right, let me show you what's going on in here. There's like, oh, maybe. Talk to me, Antonio. I want right down this pipe right here. Can you see inside of there all that junk and crap? Try to keep it there, and I'm gonna like scoop the shit uh, stuff out of there. No, that isn't gonna work. There, oh yeah, you see it? See it all coming out of there? Oh, sorry. How about now? <laughs> sorry. Oh man, there's like just bits and pieces of. Look at all the schmeg on the bottom on the ground here. Here comes the other side. Let me see. <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, which is obviously how. He's only going to ride it back and forth to the thing. I don't know. Got to think about that a little. You know what I am going to do though? Because there's nothing ventured, nothing gained. I am going to shoot sauce, and this is probably a no no. and Everybody's going to come at me and start saying this and that. Remember what the bike is going to use for. You want it functional. I mean, it's not like he's going to race the thing. Um, but on the other side, you've got to have it safe, okay? Now, there's no seals in this thing. This is one of those original elastomere bumper jobs, I believe. I could be wrong. But nothing ventured, nothing gained. Let's see what happens here. Because that thing is hurting. Oh my. Oh. I'm giving it everything I got. It did go up and down though. Oh, there's still sauce in the hole though. So some of the sauce is being prevented from going down the hall to a certain degree. Let's give it a little shot one more time. Oh. All right. Personally, myself, I think we're going to... What's the worst that could happen? It just kind of like slowly fades away is what I think would happen. I think we're going to leave it alone for now. We were able to fix that part. We got a star nut that's busted down there. He wants that up higher, obviously. <clears throat> Maybe we put an extension on it for him. Help him out. I don't think that's going to work. No good. Nope, 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 nope. All right. We'll think about that. We got our work cut out for us. We do have a cassette. We got to get a chain. We got to get that. We got that taken care of. Boom, 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 boom. All right. Cool deal. All right. Now, for a little homework for all you guys that are out there. <clears throat> Let's see who can get this right. Kind of closing it up. Little, little fun facts, you know. When the show syndicates, I want you to put your guess in, okay? You should be able to come out with this pretty much dead targets. It's going to be a quickie, that's for sure. It's not a contest. So if you really know how to do it, you know, all right, I know you know how to do it. I'm kind of looking at it towards some of the younger people that are out there, so a little, a little, a little math project for you. This is where it pays it, 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 it pays to pay attention, especially to basic stuff like math and basic math. One of the questions that everybody's asking, how many, how many, how many, how many, how many oysters? Well, you know, you look at the price list, they're XYZ per thousand. Um, for five millimeter, it's 
11, I don't know, hang on, let me see. Do, 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 do. We got Matt in the house. Matt just tuned into our Instagram. Uh, come on over to our Instagram, as a matter of fact. I don't rem memorize these figures. Whoops. I want that, and I want this. Okay. Two to three millimeter size oysters is $11 per thousand. This is from one of the local hatcheries. Two to three millimeters. Now, if you could bump it up to four to five millimeters, you're now at $15 per thousand. Now, if you can wait it out to 16 to 25 millimeter, which is big, it's $40 a thousand. Personally, myself, when you start to deal with stuff that's under six millimeter, quarter inch, you're going to have to have some sort of additional apparatus to hold your oyster. Now you ask, well, how much? And this is some of the stuff that you have to figure out. And this is just, I'm just, this is just a basic, basic idea here. All right. This millimeter, this, this oyster right here, okay, is measuring out at seven millimeters, six, seven millimeters. There it is. It's a ball bearing, okay? And I'm using the ball bearings to demonstrate how to count, how you would count oysters at whatever size they are. So you would take the oysters, now again, there might be some sediment, there might be some squishies, there might be some of this, or some, some of that, some, you know, it depends upon, and again, this is a very suggestive and very, uh, 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 there's some room for interpretation here when you start to deal with these kind of numbers, because my question is, how much volume, meaning how many cages do I have to specifically build for the amount of oysters that I want at that specific size. Did I get that clear? Did that come through all right? I'm not, you get where I'm talking from? I need to know how many cages, but how many cages, how many, how big is the cage? I know how big the cage is. I know how big the oyster is, but how many of them are gonna fit in that little guy? And then how many of those do I have to make? So there is the conundrum. There is the problem. There is that needs to be solved. So how you count oysters, whether it be the size of a pinhead or even smaller than that. We get down to where you can count them as the hatchery, where you're putting them under a microscope and the microscope has a little slide. You know what I'm talking about. And they're all little graduated off and the little guys are swimming on side of the microscope and you're moving the tray of the microscope this way and this way and you're looking through and you have a little thing in your hand and you're going one, two, three, and each square you count and you click how many, and then at the end you look at it. And then when you get done, because again, you got, you know, seven million of them in this little bucket right here. You could. Could be a possibility. It looks like water, but inside of there, they're all swimming around in there. And you would put this, obviously, but there could be seven million in here. How do you know there's seven million in there? You know, it looks like water to me. Well, there's ways that you have to count these things. So how do you count something that's a little biggy? thing. We're starting with seven millimeter. Here you go. Seven millimeter. We have scooped up seven millimeter and we have a graduated cylinder and that graduated, we're going to go into milliliters. Okay. You, I, is your pencil and paper ready right now? Okay. There will be a test on this next week. We have, oh, I'm a couple off there. Hang on a minute. You want to take a look? Well, you might get an idea. You'll get the, it, it, you'll get the point that I'm going to come in a minute. You're going to get my point in a minute. You're going to get my point in a minute. Yeah, it looks like it's kind of at 50, but there's, you know what? I think there's some that are over the line though, Antonio. And I, I, I think there's too many in there right now. I'm going to take a couple, I'm going to take a couple out. That looks like dead nuts to me. And what you do is you call a dry pack. Now, I took some out and I have them in my hand right here. We're going to take these, okay? We're going to take these for a second because I want to make sure everybody understands the point, all right? I'm going to take them and I'm going to put them in this thing right here. I'm going to put them over here. 
Now I have these guys here, and they are at 50 milliliters. Okay? 50 milliliters, ml. Now, this bucket right here goes up to 2 liters to this edge, right to that edge, right there. So now there's some interpretation here. If we could find graduated, and they do make them, graduated cylinders that are exactly flush, so that way you can take a, you can, you can, what they call wet pack. You would take the small oyster, and you would, it's just enough water to keep, because when they get, when they're really small, they kind of stick to everything. And it's really easy to lose, like, you know, a thousand in one shot, because you're not being careful when you're cleaning these things. So you have to be meticulous about this. So you dry pack them, you give them a little shake, and then you would take that and cover off the top. Boom, there you know. You know exactly. But for us, you, me, and the lamppost, we're going to two liter right here. How many? Six millimeter. This is the question now. We got six millimeters oysters, right? And we've got this many, obviously. Well, how many is in that thing, Mr. Bike Man? How many do you think are in there? Well, let's find out. We'll throw them into there, I guess. We're counting ball bearings. How to count ball bearings live? Together. One bearing. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> Two bearing. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I'm just kidding. Three. Okay, now you want to know another easy way to do how you would count oysters, like big ones, like out on the boat, is in fives. You count them in fives. Because that way when you grab, you can grab two and three, and you just look at yourself. I got three and two. Boom. Five. Ten. 20, 5, 10, 15, 20. You get the idea. All right, so I got 10 so far. Fifteen. Twenty. Twenty-five. Thirty less one. Thirty. I needed to add one. Thirty-five. Forty. Forty-five. Fifty-five, sixty. I want to try to be exact as I can, so that you, you know, I, you get the idea. Because it's really sixty-five. And the greasies. Seventy. Oh, I got a little guy mixed in there. That happens too. Sixty-five, seventy. Uh oh, and then you drop one on the ground. 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, I got one over here, 105, 106, 107, 108. 108, and plus I got some little guys. I got two runts and another one. All right? So there you have it, 108 in... ...50 milliliter. So how many of these buckets for a million? Now, remember those ones that we skimmed off the top, right off the bat? Those ones, that, again, here comes the interpolation part. I think they're a little heavy. I've saved those. How many of those are there? Let's count those. Five. 
5, 10, 14. Almost 10%. No, more than that, right? We had 108. So your factors, you better be prepared. And again, this is not a super scientific blah, 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 but this is basics here. You better have a fudge factor like 10%. So what do the hatcheries do? Do they give you 10% more? Do they give you 1,100,000? I don't know. That's a good question. That's not my order. Um, so the question goes out to you guys. How many buckets for a million? Put your comments below. And somebody is going to get something out of the comments. I don't know about next week, because next week we have a special show. We're coming to you live from a special place, uh, not at location. So it's going to be a short show next week. So if you're going to miss a show, probably next show. No, nah, not necessarily. I don't think you should miss any shows. Scratch that. Um, it's going to be short, though. All right? It's going to be a short one. So don't, uh, don't plan your day around it. You know what I'm saying? Goat, I talked about that. We talked about how to count, how to add, how to do. What's that? Oh, you want to show, you want to see the shorter real quick? Well, yeah, let's show them that. Set the camera up there to those those stools, and then I'm going to need you to help me pull it out because I can't carry it by myself. What's that? What you see the two stools that are set up there? That, that was, I was thinking that's what I ow that's what I kind of set it up for. What's my stock take? You want to talk about the stock market just a quickie while we're waiting on all that? Uh, the stock market is extremely volatile, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to buckle up and stay tight. Do not leave the ship. When the boat is, ship, when the boat is sinking, when you have a problem on the boat, stay with the boat. Okay, right to the end, stay with the boat. <laughs> I taught you that, right? Stay with the boat. It's dry. This, the only part that might be wet is up in here, maybe. Do it that way and we can turn it tilted to the side. Put it wet right on top of that one, one. Right like that, dink. Okay. So. Hang on, don't, 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 uh, are, how, yeah, you might be all right. You get the, they'll get the idea in a half a second because you'll go inside. So we made this all out of plywood and then we put these spit st stringers in here and then we put little wedges to the side of these stringers because fiberglass doesn't like to go at 90 degrees. And then we put these things here because these are shoots, okay? So right now you're like, how's this thing going to go? Tilt it upright to the right position. Oh. You can't see this side. Turn around. <laughs> So the tumbler is going to go into here, and then through the different holes, again, the tumbler is coming, you'll get the idea, through the different holes, because you have three different sections, one, two, three, they drop down and then they drop down to the bucket, because this thing is standing up like this and the tumbler is going through, and they come in through the end of the oysters, and this is going to be on a little angle about like, eh, about like that. This is what I've been working on for the last oh, month, month and a half. The tumbler itself I've been working on for a long time, but this is going direct under the boat. Transparency, this is what I'm talking about. Um, this is something that had to be made. If you're going to play the game and you're going to do it right, you got to be able to sort them and you got to be able to count them. Now, somebody said something just before I left out. I think it was Calvin. Ugh. Uh, you know what? We put that right in the middle of that. Move. Because I got to do the coated inside of this. All right, down. I got to get the inside of this one a couple more times. All right, that's cool. I take care of that. I got a little witness on my hands. Did you? Do you got stuff on your hands or no? Not too bad. Because it's it's special. Uh, it's special thinner to get that shit off. I'll take that too. Oh, I got one over here.
it's it's what's that it doesn't stink too bad but it is it is thick and zesty you want a little of the special thinner you're all right i'm gonna take a little special thinner all right i'm gonna be right there we're gonna sign off answer a couple of questions it's about time right that put away the special thinner um, oh that was one of the things I wanted to talk about was defender uh, I've ordered been ordering stuff from defender you with me Antonio yeah. and this solvent three yeah. solvent three 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 brushing liquid um, really works good Ooh, uh, what got really blurry Oh, back in action now? How do you cook oysters? That's a good question, Mr. No. Steam them. Oysters Rockefeller. Uh, we put them in an oyster stew. Oyster stew is delicious. You can eat them raw, too. Eating them raw is one thing that you have to be careful of. And this is where, the, this is where certain things come in that I just learned recently is fecal coliform, which is uh, the amount of doo-doo in the water and whatnot. And certain places might have more doo-doo than other places. And, the DEC, and we'll get into all of these scientific things at a later date, but uh, there is a science to it. The bottom line, though, if you're going to become an oyster farmer, and what I've found out, and again, I'm on, I've only been at this for about a year now, but there's some basic things that you just, you're not going to forget, and you're, you can't deviate from. And the one basic thing that I think everybody in the shellfish industry has got to understand is vibri vibrio and disease run hand in hand with the temperature and the rise of the temperature. So the bottom line is you've got to keep your product cold, period. It's simple. They're going to trace it back to you if you weren't in the proper, okay? But if you document and you got everything good, you're going to be good. These are more regulations that are out there. Um, but this regulation is one of those regulations that, holy crap, man, you guys all better follow it. And the magic number is 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Actually, there's some differentiation, but that is the, you know, minimum, I think. Some guys say 65 if you're on the boat. And the bottom line is when they get refrigerated at the restaurant, the restaurant has to be doing There's tags that are going on your thing that's going to be like a branding of your, this is your oyster, this is your tag, this is, came out of this water that is certified by the DEC, blah, blah, blah. And it was harvested at XYZ time on XYZ day at the exact specific time and it was placed from the water into a cooler via and kept at 50 degrees these are all things that you have to have in your cultivation plant does it sound easy no it's not easy is it the more technical part of the job yeah a little bit but how hard is it to keep them 50 you gotta make sure you got ice that's it in this hot summer this the, nowadays you know, no biggie who cares out of, the, out of the water into the bags get make sure they're clean and whatnot into a cooler into a container to keep them clean and they're not out of the sun, the sun. It's amazing the temperature and the amount of bacteria and how quickly the bacteria grows with the temperature increase. That's what I'm getting at. Dee 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 dee. -de. Who's gonna steal one oyster and one clam? So many rules. Mr. No, a little bit. I'm with you NASCAR. What did NASCAR say? I'm going to back up a minute. Anybody else got any more questions? Mr. No? Don't pay attention. That's right, Johnny. Don't pay attention to the stock market. I do have to pay. Antique refrigerator? No. Oh, an oyster organizer. There you go. Better have a long boat. Our boat is uh, 26 feet long. <laughs> Will you eat oysters in each meal? Will I eat oysters in each meal? When people get sick from eating them, you know who to go get. That's correct. 
Who will swab the poop deck? <laughs> uh, you guys are too funny. Um, all right, I got nothing else really. I got nothing more. We did pretty good, I thought. We did. We went for. We got to get the heck out of here, um, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. Our show wouldn't be half as much fun if it wasn't for each one of you guys. My heart go out to all of you guys. Thank you. Thank you and double thank you for tuning in and taking time out of your day to check us out. There will, obviously, I'm kind of slowly transitioning, I guess is the proper word, um, into the new oyster venture. Uh, and again, I, I, that is my goal, is to have total transparency to show how to do it. Because I want more people to do it so that it becomes more popular, so that everybody can have fun and be happy. Um, it's all about work, work, and more work. A lot of guys say, don't quit your day job <laughs> to become an oyster farmer. And they're right. Slow and steady wins the race. There's a lot of little steps. But the day will come when I'm out in the bay and the sun is coming up and it's so peaceful and so calm and there's nobody within a mile of you. You know that for a fact. There's nobody. Because you can look and you see nothing. It's going to be a kind of a neat experience, you know, just a... I'm looking forward to it, man. That day is coming soon, man. And that's the goal right now. Being at peace and being happy is all what it's all about. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's show. Come on over to our Facebook, our Instagram, our Twitter. Here comes Tony Joe. Perfect timing for us to get out of here. Thanks, guys. You want to wait for Tony Joe or not? Your call. I lost my glasses. I can't read my comments anymore. All right, we'll stick around for TJP. We'll let her say hello. If she's cranky and whatnot, we'll just go right off. We'll just sign right off. If she's not cranky, she might be cranky because she's running behind schedule, I think. Uh, we do need to do a little cleanup over here, too. Uh, oysters make me sick. They're too rich for my belly. Oh, Dan, you haven't had them right. We're going to help you out. Bali bike band? I wish. That's a long plane ride. No, next week is... Uh, Go another two hours. Yeah, I can't, guys. I can't. Get TJ on the show. All right, she's coming. She's coming, Donnie. She's coming. Uh, some say a prayer for my mom. Jim Payton, your mom passed away, and, you know, hey, absolutely. Gone but not forgotten, you know? Um, oh, here's that one rogue oyster. Gone but not forgotten. And, uh, eh. Time. Time will help you out. I, uh, I talk to my dad pretty regularly. Do I miss him? Yeah, I miss him. Is it obsessive? No. It's different. Just different. It's the only way I can describe it. Different. She ain't getting out of the car? Your chain is slipping, Alex. It's chain and derail, chain and cog in the back, like we talked about. Um, it's not going to be next week, and it won't be. Probably won't be the week after. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, but stay tuned because you'll see what happens and what we what we replace on that. Uh, and I'm going to try to get some of the buggy lug stuff, like the bearings packed and that fork situation figured out, and I'll have it halfway put back together before we come back to the show next time around, and we'll show you exactly what we did. So make sure you come over. All right, I'm on. I'm done. Come on over to our Instagram, our Twitter, and our Facebook. We got a lot of good stuff, and there will. And no, one of those places will be where it's going to be announced. Boom, come to X Y Z channel, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. I love you guys. Mwah. I want you to never fear. The bike band for you is here. See you next week from a far off land.